Hello and thanks for watching this Cloud9 ERP Solutions video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about journal vouchers. It's a screen in Acumatica that allows you to do a number of transactions in the same screen. So normally you may be used to creating your transactions and accounts payable. So you have your bills and your payments, creating your transactions and receivables. You got your invoices and payments. Maybe the invoice was created from an order shipment, but nonetheless, at the end of the day, for a customer, it turns into an invoice. And maybe you're creating all your GL transactions under finance journal transactions, where you key in the debit and the credit and you continue on until you post that. But if we click show all, we'll see an option called journal vouchers. And if I go back, this screen is different in that I get the ability to create a number of transactions and I can create transactions that impact the AP and the AR, which you can't do with a journal transaction. Before I continue, only 15% of you are subscribed. Hit that subscribe button now to get notified about new videos and events. Now it all starts with these voucher entry codes. So if we take a look, you have the ability to add additional entry codes. And this is how this is structured. The first thing is, is what module are you using? So we talked about GLAPAR. You can also use this for your cash accounts. But if we select, for example, AP, Notice you have a few options, bill, cash, purchase, payment. You can do a credit adjustment. And an example of that would be to increase a vendor's balance, but not actually have a bill on record. A debit adjustment in case you get a credit from the vendor and any kind of prepayment. On the AR side of things, you can create invoices, cash sales, credit memos, debit memos, payments, you can see all the other options down there. Under cash account, you can do just a cash entry. And under GL, you can do a GL entry. These are useful because maybe you want to mix in a couple of GL entries alongside of all the other transactions you may be doing. Now, if we go back and we create a new journal voucher, we can come down here, we can pick the date, you can pick the post period. So let's say it's the 16th. Of course, just like a journal entry, I can change the post period. Acumatica is gonna warn me to the fact that I have a different post period, doesn't quite match my transaction date. If you go back and you change to another transaction date, then Acumatica will repick the post period. You can give it a note here. And you can also give it a note up here at the top. And of course, activities, and you can do attachments here. You can drag and drop any file, or you can click upload using the mobile app. So if you have the Acumatica mobile app, this will prompt you to use your phone and take a picture with that. And then when we come down here, so what we can do here is we can pick a transaction code. So those are all the codes we selected earlier. So maybe we purchased some newspapers and we did that from go to vendor. Your debit account is picked. So that's whatever expense account you want to use here. It happens to default to cost of goods inventory. That's just where it's pulling it up from the vendor but let's say it's an office expense. And then your credit account is your accounts payable. This is gonna go on our AP. We can use a reference number. This would be the reference number the vendor gave us, some sort of invoice number, receipt number. And the amount is $350. Now for our next line, we can pick uh, an AR bill. So maybe we have the newspapers and a few days later, we decide to sell them to a customer that came in off the street. 
So we'll select our customer. Our debit account is accounts receivable. Our credit account is some sort of income account that you can choose. So it could be, for example, miscellaneous. We have other income here. We'll choose that. And then if we've given the customer some sort of reference number, something manually written, we can put that in there. We have it turned on. It's required. And maybe we're selling it for $500. Additionally, you can charge tax here. So if I pick my tax zone, and then we could pick our tax category. In this case, it's gonna be exempt, but otherwise it'll calculate the tax for you. What you can also do is split. So what this allows you to do, if I check this box, it allows me to, if I click the plus button again, it allows me to add line details for the main line. So all of these lines below will be a child of the main line of that invoice. Notice the same reference number there. And if I tab across, I can pick different sales accounts if I need to. Of course, the debit account is going to be the same. Can't change that. But just like in an invoice where in the line items you can have individual detail, you have the ability to pick additional sales accounts. Over here, we can pick the amounts. So maybe it's $350 for this line and maybe this is the New York Times. Then we'll go down to another line and this maybe is $150. And again, when we scroll over to the right, we can say this one is the New York Post. And what you notice is I got an error message. Why is that? Well, if I hover over, you can see that this $500 doesn't match up to the 350 and 150. And that's because these lines defaulted to taxable. So I can do one of two things. I can change these back to exempt, or I can adjust this amount to 550, and then I can save. So now I have an accounts payable bill that I'm going to be creating, still on hold. I still haven't released it, so these haven't been created yet. But I have an invoice with a bunch of details. So that's great. Additionally, what I can do is I can create another line and I have an entry code in here for an accounts receivable and accounts payable payment. So if I select the accounts payable payment, this is all being done on the same day, apparently. It's a big day. And I tab over. This is gonna be debiting the accounts payable account and we're gonna credit whatever bank account we maybe used. If it's a cash account or petty cash, maybe we paid for it in petty cash, we'll choose that. Maybe there's some sort of reference. And we paid $350 to pay off that bill. And then one other thing here, we'll choose an AR payment because the customer gave us money. Now keep in mind, we do have the different transaction codes that we can use that are, for example, cash receipt. So we could do this in one transaction. We're doing it in multiple transactions. And again, I'm going to explain why. We'll choose cash. And we also missed our external reference number that the customer paid with. We have that as a requirement in our preferences, so that's there. Now, how do we apply these payments? Well, since we created these lines, if we go over to AP Payment Applications, you'll notice that those transactions show up as available to be applied. So our APP TRAN code the one that has this 000884, these are all automatically numbered based on your numbering system. But if I go into AP Payments and I click on the plus button, I can select any outstanding bills for this vendor. So the only one I'm really interested in is the 631 that we created. I'm gonna apply all of that there. And then I can go over to AR Payments and the same thing, the line I added under transactions, this 0031 
is showing up here on the top of this split screen. And now I can apply it to a invoice. And what I want to apply it to is this 3200 invoice. We'll go back and we'll select it. Notice it's available. Ordinarily, if you were doing a payment and the invoice hadn't been released yet, you wouldn't be able to see that payment to apply. But because this is a journal voucher, Acumatica is showing it to us because we're going to be releasing this all the, at the same time. It's not a big deal. So amount paid is $500. And that's because we made a $500 payment. There's a $50 balance. We probably could have changed that. Let's go back and change that to 550 my mistake we'll go back to ar applications and we'll change this now to 550 and now i have a zero balance we'll save it we'll remove the hold and release it if you go over to gl transactions it'll show you all the entries that were made in producing these documents and that's what they are. These are all documents that we created. So we have our AP bill. And you can see $350 here was credited to our accounts payable account. We hit office expenses for a debit, the same amount. And then we have our payment. So we debited $350 out of our AP account. We took the money out of our cash account to do it. And lastly, you can see all your AR invoices and the corresponding payments. You can also see the tax entries here as well. So why would I use this? When business as usual, I can use my accounts payable system and I can use my accounts receivable system and go through a normal, more normal process. Well, the reason you might use this is to simply import to it. So if you have a, a, a battery of transactions coming from a different software package. Maybe you have a point of sale software and that point of sale software does a great job what it does, but it's got no financials. You need to bring it all back to the ERP solution. Maybe you have many, many locations. And in this case, it makes it much easier to have your third party data come in in a method where you can select a customer. You could just use a generic customer. It could be generic customer or generic point of sale customer code. So if we scroll over to the left, right, we could just pick a generic code. We don't need that. If it's point of sale, you probably don't care. Maybe in some cases you do. But I have the ability to select my debit account and my credit account and my reference number and my total amount. And I can do all that in one line without having to create multiple transactions. So this can be very, very easy for either data entry or simply importing. So that's it. That's Journal Vouchers. And if you found it helpful and useful, please click the like button. And if you have any questions about this or anything else Acumatica, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again and have a great day.